Okay guys, back again with another educational style video today. So alongside obviously the vlog content that I am putting out consistently at the moment, um, specifically the Summer Shred series, if you haven't watched those videos, go and check out the videos on the channel, um, essentially documenting my fat loss phase this summer. I'm going to aim to put out an educational style video every week because at the end of the day, this is the core of what I do. It's what we help clients with um, inside my coaching program, Athletic Aesthetic. But today I'm going to be covering how to balance running and lifting. Now, I have put a few videos out similar to this in the past. Um, but, you know, hybrid training, balancing strength training and running, you know, balancing strength training and with other sort of endurance pursuits is becoming incredibly popular in the industry um, which is amazing i think it's it's an amazing way to train but at the same time there are a lot of coaches that are relatively new to this style of training who for example you know they've lifted weights for years and they've gone and run a 5 or 10k and they're now kind of labeling themselves a hybrid training coach when quite frankly in my opinion they don't have enough experience and um, themselves to be able to coach you know a client fully around how to balance running and lifting effectively so I wanted to make another video and obviously I'm always learning and um, I'm always pushing my own performance and physique and you know we're working with a lot of clients within the business right now over 120 I think who are all pretty much doing hybrid training so we're gathering a lot more experience around this discipline and this style of training so I wanted to cover this today but if you're new to the channel a little bit about me I've personally been balancing running and lifting for the last five years with really, really good success. I've been able to progress with my lifts, so get stronger, improve my physique, bring up weak areas, but also massively improve my running ability and performance as well. As a natural athlete that had been training for eight or nine years strength training before I even got into running, it goes without saying that my progression in strength training and physique is obviously slower than my progression with running. Um, but nonetheless, I am still progressing. I'm still able to progressively overload. I'm still, as I said before, able to bring up weaker body parts um, and I'm seeing rapid improvements in my performance of running. So as I said before, I've been lifting for over 13 years. Um, the first few years of that was just kind of just finding my feet, doing my own research, strength and conditioning for rugby. That's kind of my background. And I would say, you know, I would say the last six years have been optimal or close to training um, really, really focused on progressive overload and improving performance, which obviously leads to improving your physique. Um, and I picked up running just before lockdown and I've been doing it very consistently then. Um, there's probably not been a period of two weeks where I haven't done a run. And I think my average mileage over the last four and a half years has probably probably been close to 30, 35K a week. Um, and more recently in the last year, closer to 50K a week. Um, I'm running about 30 to 35K a week at the moment. Um, it's very, very hot in Dubai, so I had to bring my running, running mileage down recently, but I've built it back. Well, I am building it back up now that I'm back in the UK. Um, and again, if you're new here, I run a coaching business called Athletic Aesthetic. We have a team of, of four coaches um, and a nutritionist on board, and we specialize in body composition results for our clients through hybrid training. Um, I am calling it hybrid training because, you know, it is a trend in the industry, but ultimately I think this is just a, a way of training. It's not hybrid training. It's just the way that I think most people should train. I think they should do some sort of strength training and bodybuilding training that allows them to improve their body composition. Um, and as I said before, bring up weaker areas with their physique and, and constantly be focused on that physique progression, but also just having some conditioning and cardio in their routine. Um, and as I say, we are focused with results wise of our clients on improving their body composition through hybrid training. I know that our some of the coaching brands that are solely focused on just improving performance and getting people good times through races and stuff like that. But we combine improving physique and performance. Um, and we do also prep clients for races like, you know, half half marathons, marathons, 70.3s, full Ironmans, ultras, things like that. So training structure. So basically, I'm going to run over the four, well, four things that you really need to consider uh, and take into account if you want to get the most out of combining running and lifting and be able to progress in both so first of all it goes out saying is training structure and within that it's maintaining a rigid training structure and what i mean by that is essentially try to avoid moving your training sessions 
Otherwise, your performance and recovery will suffer. Now, with this sort of training, hybrid training, whatever you want to call it, naturally, you're going to probably be doing more sessions per week than someone who is just focused on body composition and who is just doing bodybuilding. There are obviously exceptions, but I would say to do well with hybrid training, this style training, you definitely need to be training five times a week. You could do four. You can do more than that. Personally, I train six or seven times a week at the moment, but I build that tolerance up over a long period of time. And obviously it's my job. I have the capability to do that. Um, But when you are training more often and you're trying to stick to a training split throughout the week, it gives you, there's less scope to be moving training sessions around. And if you do move them around, you're going to find that your performance and recovery will suffer. Now, this is an example of a training split that a lot of our clients will follow. And it's structured in this way to allow people to get the most out of their performance in the training sessions and on the runs, but also to allow them to recover as well before they go into the next training session. So for example, this is a training split with four strength training sessions per week and two runs. So this, the person that follows this, you could say that they are probably more focused on their physique than their running, but they still enjoy running, hence having two sessions in there. You could do a three and a three split if you want to train six days a week, that would be three strength sessions and three runs. If you were doing that split, I would recommend a lower session, an upper session, a full body session, and then runs would really depend on what you're, what you're working towards. If you're in a base building block, it could be two easy runs and a long run. Um, if you're prepping for a specific race, it will obviously be some sort of long run, some midweek speed work, and then a recovery easy run as well. But using this example here, this is basically the split that I follow, but I do an extra easy run, do three runs as well. So Monday, upper A, so generally when we put strength sessions in someone's program, we will have two different upper body days and two different lower body days targeting slightly different muscle groups if the person is doing four training sessions a week. So an upper A session for us would usually be horizontal focused. So movements like bench press, um, bent over rows, seated rows, things like that. So upper A on the Monday, legs A on the Tuesday, that could be a squat and lunge focus session, a little bit more quads, let's say. And then you could do a run on the Wednesday. So that could be an easy run, speed work, whatever it is. Then Thursday, upper body B, which is focused on vertical push and pulling. So, you know, shoulder press, pull downs, pull ups, whatever it is. Friday, um, a legs B session, generally focused more on the posterior chain. So deadlifts, hamstrings, calves, maybe. Saturday, full rest period. Sunday, longer run. Now, the reason it's structured like this, which, which is why I think it works well, is essentially you're getting most of your training done and all your strength training done Monday to Friday. Most of the clients we work with are social, they're corporate workers. They like to just stick to that routine and get all their training sessions done Monday through Friday. It gives them a little bit of flexibility on a Saturday if they do need to move sessions from the week to maybe use that Saturday session as a buffer if something's come up with work and they need to move a training session along. But it also allows them just to have that full day off, which is obviously essential for recovery. And some people, by the time they get to Saturday, they, they don't want to even look at the gym. Um, and then Sunday is kind of like the stereotypical day to do your longer run because it's usually the day of the week where, the pe- where people have the most free time. And what you can see here is obviously you're doing, you're doing upper on a Monday, legs on a Tuesday, then you've got a run on the Wednesday, and then you've got a day off until your second leg session there. So you've got your upper on Thursday. So you're giving your legs a little bit of a break there. Now, legs shouldn't really be sore after doing an easy run. If you are conditioned, you've been doing this for a decent amount of time, like most people that we work with. And equally, you should be able to do an easy run after a leg training session. Yes, there might be a little bit sore. You might have some DOMS there, but it shouldn't affect your performance on your run. And if anything, it will serve as a little bit of active recovery. Now, if you were in a race prep and you were wanting to do speed work midweek, then you might want to rotate the the upper session and the, the leg session. But personally, like I do heavy legs, heavy squats and lunges on a Tuesday and I still go to the track and do a speed session on a Wednesday. I've not really noticed too much drop off in my performance there. And I will say if you are going to do this style of hybrid, this style of hybrid training, then you're going to have to accept that your legs are probably going to be sore a lot of the time throughout the week. Like my legs are sore. I did legs on Tuesday. I did a speed session yesterday, Wednesday, and I'm doing legs again tomorrow. So yeah, a little bit of soreness is inevitable, but it shouldn't hold you back from your performance if you focus on your recovery and diet and nutrition, which is what I'm going to come on to next. But that's a good training structure there. Uh, As I say, try and stick to those training days. If you need to move one around, that's okay because you've got that buffer on a Saturday, but there is not as much flexibility there as someone who is just training three or four times a week. So try and stick to the training days. I've managed to do that for the last four or five years 
even when traveling, running my own business, taking lots of calls and stuff like that. So if I can do it, then I'm a firm believer that most people can stick to that training structure. And if you start giving yourself the option to move things around, people procrastinate and they end up missing sessions. So I'd recommend sticking to that structure. Nutrition, so, so important. I mean, it's important for a body, a bo- someone who is bodybuilding focused, someone who's fully physique focused, someone who is just endurance focused. Um, so it's equally as important for someone who's balancing strength training and endurance training, i.e. hybrid training. So that shouldn't be there. That's pasted from the previous slide. But within nutrition at the basic level, I would aim for to consume two grams of protein per kilo of body weight, obviously to support your recovery, to allow you to recover from your training sessions, which is really, really important when you are doing this high volume of training, but also to recover between sessions and also promote muscle growth as well. A lot of people think that you can't actually build muscle when you're running and doing endurance training. You absolutely can. We've worked with tens of clients that have done that hundreds at this point to be honest a couple of hundred definitely um and you really have to look at the context of the individual if they're new to to running or they're new to lifting or both um once you optimize their training program once you optimize their nutrition they're going to be in a great position to build muscle even if they're doing endurance training even in the if they're in a, a calorie deficit if you took someone like a bodybuilder who's training you could say was optimized already and nutrition was optimized already then it's going to be probably be quite hard for them to build muscle if you add in a lot of endurance training into their routine. But it's not really the sort of people that I think are taking up hybrid training. Most people that are doing that, their training isn't structured in in an optimal way and they're probably not consuming enough protein. So that is really, really important. Two grams of protein per, per kilo of body weight. So for me, I'm just under 80 kilos. I will shoot for a minimum of 160 per day. Per day. You can go higher than this. You can go up to 2.2, 2.5 if you want, but minimum two. I wouldn't be going any lower than that. We'll go lower, generally 1.7 to 1.8 for females, but for males, two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. Maintaining a high carbohydrate intake to support performance and recovery is super, super important as well. Carbohydrates are going to be your primary energy source when you're lifting and when you're running. So not only maintaining a high carbohydrate intake throughout the day and throughout the week, but actually placing your carbohydrates close to your training sessions as well will lead to improvements in performance. So if you train first thing in the morning, you're going to be okay doing, you know, an hour's weight session or an hour's run fasted. Um, But if it's any later on in the day, let's say lunchtime or evening, then I would certainly recommend consuming carbohydrates around that. And the reason that you want to maintain, obviously, a high carbohydrate intake is to make sure that you are also replenishing your glycogen stores after your run and after your lift because if you go and run for an hour or longer an hour and a half your glycogen stores are going to be pretty much fully depleted so you need to replenish those after um what you can also look into as well is consuming more carbs on higher output days so for example if you are going to the gym and let's say doing an easy run on the same day um i do that once per week i do one double day on a friday where i'll do like an eight or 10k in the morning and then i'll go to the gym in the afternoon I will consume more calories through carbohydrates on that day to support performance and recovery there. And if you start doing, you know, you're prepping for a half marathon or even a full marathon, then you're going to need to put a lot more carbohydrates in on those days of those longer runs and also the day before as well. Um, but this will obviously depend on your body composition goals. If you're in a deficit and you're trying to lose body fat, you know, having higher output days can be a great way to achieve a deficit. Um, so you might, you could keep your carbohydrate intake the same on that day, but you might need to accept that performance might suffer and recovery might suffer as well. Um, so it's always about finding that balance. If you are driving fat loss, but also improving performance between you want to have enough fuel to maintain and improve performance, but at the same time, you do want to be in a calorie deficit. So that's why I think it's super important to, to track calories and have that visibility around nutrition. If you are doing hybrid training and you also have a physique goal recovery week so probably something that a lot of people do not talk about with this topic you see a lot of people just you know so much on instagram tiktok at the moment where people are running and lifting every single day six days a week um it's just not realistic from a you know a time availability standpoint for most people and i question how long these people are actually doing and how long they're able to keep it up obviously there are exceptions but i know for me if i was to run five or six days a week and lift five or six days a week I would burn out. I wouldn't be able to perform in my business. Other things in my personal life would suffer. So what we 
for each of our clients. Uh, running wise, we'll do three week builds where we'll build volume and intensity for three weeks. And then every fourth week, we will take a recovery week. So volume, overall volume will drop and weekly mileage will drop between 15 and 20% on that fourth week. So let's say someone for ease was running 20k a week which isn't really that much um on a recovery week we would drop the volume down to you know maybe just 14 to 16k that week and if they were doing speed work we would eliminate or significantly reduce the amount of speed work on that on that training week and just replace it with zone two aerobic easy runs so you're still keeping the legs ticking over so that when you go back into your building phase, your body hasn't forgot what that feels like, but you are giving the, the legs a little bit of a chance to recover there. So you're reducing fatigue, fatigue in the legs so that you can go back into another building week in the fifth week and so on. Strength training, personally, I have found the, the most effective thing to do there with me personally and, and clients is to listen to your body and take a deload week from strength training when you feel you, like you need it. Um, so when you are finding that you are plateauing in strength, you're feeling fatigued, you're not motivated to go and train, I would, I would recommend doing a deload week instead of actually scheduling in every X amount of weeks. I think for running, it is necessary because it's easier to push through a running and you could end up probably running and building volume for eight to 10 weeks and then you potentially would wind up with an injury. Um, so I think you need that kind of like strict rule in there to take recovery every four weeks. That's what I've always done personally and, and of our clients. But with the strength training, you know, if you say I'm going to take a deload week every five or six weeks, you might feel fresh on that sixth week and you're actually holding yourself back from improving performance there. So I would listen to your body and deload weeks. You can take a full week off. Personally, I don't like to do that because I really like to train. But what you can do is just significantly reduce the volume in the gym, reduce the RPE and reduce the load. So let's say you were doing you were in a strength block and you were doing four sets of six or something like that on your main compounds. You could switch the rep range to just two to three sets of eight to 10 and go to four or five reps away from failure, maybe equivalent to an RPE six and just allow your body to recover there and it'll allow you to build them. But I think I have found personally when I'm working with our clients that the best thing to do with strength training is to listen to your body and put implement a deload week when you feel like you need it. Lastly is doing the extra work, which again is probably, well, it is unspoken about a lot in the industry because people just love to see more and more and more training. Um, but the older I've gotten and the more I've learned about the style of training, I've realized that recovery is just as important as actually doing the training. So you've got to focus on your recovery outside of the training. Um, quality over quantity, again, it's not about just adding in more miles, adding in more strength training. There definitely will be a tipping point. So don't be tempted to just keep training and training and training and doing more. But if you focus on your recovery more, you will find that it will lead to improvements in your performance in the training sessions and that also your physique will look better day to day because when you are, well, when you're doing a lot of training, you are inherently stressed. It's stressful on the body and your body looks stressed. Like you can, you can tell when your physique just looks a little bit flat. It looks a little bit watery. You're literally holding on to stress and fatigue, water weight and cortisol. Um, and the more that you can recover, focus on your nutrition, focus on your sleep, and do some of the other protocols that I'm going to mention here, the better your physique will look day to day. I always look a lot better after a, a full rest day and a, and a solid seven to eight hours sleep. Physique will always look harder and leaner and you'll usually see drops on the scale. Um, so obviously sleep is the main one, ideally eight hours, if not certainly seven hours and focusing on a consistent sleep and weight cycle there. Supplementing with supplements such as magnesium can help that as well. Um, I like to use saunas as well, more to manage stress, to be honest, um, and to manage my breathing, but they, they are obviously very beneficial with actual recovery as well. Three to four times a week for a minimum of 15 minutes, preferably if you can do that. And then occasional deep tissue therapy. I definitely think this is overrated, but I think it's worth doing and paying the money for once a month. If you're someone that trains a lot, um, it's not going to fix issues. It's not going to fix injuries, but it will give you some temporary release in tighter areas, which can lead to improvements in performance. And it's just a bit of a psychological thing as well. i say, I think it is worth doing for someone that is training as, as much as this. Um, so recovery is super, super important. So just four main tips there. I'll say I've, main, I've made videos about this in the past. You can go and watch them. They're in the educational playlist on the YouTube channel. Um, but if you are kind of interested about what I've mentioned here, this is very much just scratching the service, surface in terms of training, nutrition, recovery, stress management with training. If you'd like to find out more about how we do things um, and take a little bit of a look into how our coaching program works, then you can inquire for our coaching program below by filling in 
the the form below uh, and me or, or another member of the team will be in touch to book a call and to arrange a free consultation call with you alternatively you can head over to instagram joe underscore is underscore fit we've got a lot more content on there surrounding hybrid training strength training and running um so you can find out more info there